Good morning. Um, today we look at Chronicles, First Chronicles 13 through 15, continuing uh, much of what we will hear of David, and and uh, it echoes some of what we read in in First Samuel and um, about the mighty men coming and, and different things happening. And uh, chapter 13 starts with David uh, consulting the commanders of the thousands and of the hundreds and every leader and saying to them, if it seems good to you and if it's the will of God, let's go get the Ark of the Covenant and return it to the temple. And everybody says, yeah, that's a good idea. And God agrees as well. And he says, yeah, it's time for the Ark of the Covenant to come. And they're they're moving it, and and as the story was, we we, we same story with it, you know. As uh, somebody kind of stumbled and the ark moved, this one man reached out to support it, and uh, and he died because of because of that. And um, his name was Uza, and so they called that place, you know, by his name as a reminder of that. And then it says that David. Uh, was afraid then of God. He was, you know, this this act of of, of Uzzah dying before, because he had touched the ark. Um, and granted, I mean, he was not one of the Levites, one of the priests, and it was only the priests that were to handle it. Uh, so anyway, the ark then was left in a in a different sp- place there for for three months. It remained in the household of. Obed Edom, and and it says his house was blessed for three months. And again, we read that in First uh, Samuel or Second Samuel, one or the other. And um, then, as chapter fourteen starts out, the the king of Tyre uh, sends his message to David because David is um, you know getting ready to build the the temple, and and he says, "I will," or the the temple and his house, his mansion as well. And so the king of Tyre sends a messenger along with cedar logs and masons and carpenters to to build this house. And and it says it's it's now that David perceives that God has uh, chosen him or established him as king. I suppose I shouldn't say it's chosen, but established him because uh, David had been chosen by God to be king while Saul was still king, while Saul was still living. So there was that conflict in there. But now David understands that God has established him when the kings of the other nations and the other countries um, recognize him that way. And when he has had the success in, in battle against the Philistines and has brought the ark back and everything. And then... Um, you know, it, uh, and then it goes on and it tells about how he took many more wives and had many more children and and uh, and that. And then we go back to talking about the Philistines a little bit. And, the, you know, the Philistines are, are, are going to come against David. And uh, they made a raid in the valley and David in, inquired of God. And this is an important thing that David always has... He always consults God on these things. I mean, not always, not with Bathsheba, he didn't. We know that. But um, he inquired of God, should I go against the Philistines? And and the response is, yes, go against them. And and I, I'm thinking, you know, that, you know, how the, the intimate relationship that King David and God had, as well as King David, or King Saul, rather, and God to begin with, that, that God was so intimate with the people, so uh, available to them, and... And, and through the prophets, how, how so often God spoke to the prophets and the prophets came with messages. And, you know, and we hear people say today that, oh, if God would only send a messenger. And, and um, you know, God sends you and me, I mean, all the time. I mean, we are God's messengers. We are God's ambassadors in the world. We are, we are the prophets and we, and we are to look at the word and, and to not misinterpret it, not to misrepresent it. But uh, but we we today are, are God's voice in in the world, and we need to remember that. But you know, so David goes up against them, and you know, to, to begin with, because God says, you "Go up against them, and I will give them into your hand." And then uh, they had success that way. And then chapter verse thirteen again, it starts out once again. The Philistines came, and again, David consults with God, and. 
Um, and God says, well, don't, don't go up against them, but rather go around behind them, and I will deliver the blow. And so David does what God tells him. He, he goes around behind, and, and it says, when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the balsam trees, then go out to battle, for God has gone before you. And, and so God is, is blessing David and the people of Israelite with his leadership, with his um, dominion over the other peoples that would come against his chosen people. And uh, the chapter 14 ends with, The fame of David went out into all of the lands, and the Lord brought fear of him on all nations. So, and the fear is probably both a little bit of the afraid fear, but also the respect fear. That, you know, they, they, they feared David and, and the armies of the Israelites because they knew that if they came up against them, that, that God was with them and that with God's leadership, they had no chance against them. But also the, the respect aspect of fear is in that, in that they knew that, you know, David was chosen by God, established by God, and, and was a, a good leader that way. So then chapter 15 deals with David uh, building the house for himself in the city of David and preparing the, the place for the ark of God. And, and it says pitched a tent for it, you know, because David is not the one to build a house for of the temple. That's going to be Solomon that does that. So in David's reign, the, the, the ark of the covenant and the, the tabernacle is, is still the tent that, that God had instructed to be built, you know, way back in the um, in the time of the flight from from Egypt, and so the you know they they place the ark, they bring the ark to Jerusalem and, and bring all of the everything there, and David summons all of the priests and and all of them together, and and uh, and then he says to the priests because you the priests didn't carry it the first time. And we didn't carry it as we were supposed to on the new poles and all this and that. This time we're going to do it right. So, you know, cleanse yourselves, consecrate yourselves. That's not the word they use in here. They sanctify themselves. They set, you know, to sanctify is to set yourself apart. And that's what God does. He sanctifies us from our sins. He sets us apart from our sins in Jesus Christ. So they sanctified themselves. They cleansed their bodies and, and so that... So that when they carried the the Ark of the Covenant, they were they weren't unclean in any way, and you know the the rituals of clean and unclean are are quite extensive many times as well. But the the Levites cleansed themselves, sanctified themselves, and and they carried the Ark. Uh, it says they carried the Ark of God on their shoulders with poles, as Moses had commanded, according to the word of the Lord. So it wasn't just Moses' command, but it was the Lord's command. And so the, under David's leadership, the, the Levites and everyone was, were not, um, they were all following God's laws and God's command. And then, you know, verse 16, David commanded the chiefs of the Levites to appoint their kindred of singers and to play the musical instruments. And, you know, and, and the sound of music filled the, filled the area uh, where it was and, and, um, you know, we hear, sing to the Lord a new song, you know, sing with joy. And, and I tell people that, you know, it doesn't say that you got to sing the right note. It says sing with joy. And, and I've heard many people over the years sing with great joy of God, but a total lack of musical abilities as to be able to sing. But their joy, uh, the joy that they bring to the Lord is what's important. And, and that's that, that's what we need to remember that you know we don't all we don't all have a beautiful singing voice we don't all have a beautiful speaking voice we we aren't all uh, extremely good looking and thin and whatever we would like to be but but in and through all of it, it doesn't make any difference who we are what we look like we are all God's children and and uh, we make a joyful noise unto the Lord that way but anyway the Ark of the Covenant comes to the city of David. And as we end our reading today, um, just as we did the one time, uh, you know, back in Samuel, reading through Samuel's books, um, you know, it says that Michal, Michael, the daughter of Saul, the one, you know, David's wife, you know, uh, sees all of this through the window and sees King David leaping and dancing, and she despises him in her heart. Yeah, you know, David is... 
leaping and dancing to the Lord and because of the Lord's blessing and everything. But um, this lady can't see that. And and to me, that's a, a kind of a, one of those deals that, you know, when I talked about some of these people that sing with great joy, but very little musical ability, someone would come up to me after worship and say, why did you let that person sing? That was awful. And, you know, it's the joy on the person's face. But but here, you know, David's wife looks upon him, leaping and dancing for joy in the Lord and and holds that against him. Um, so don't don't judge people by their outward appearances and don't be so quick to condemn somebody because they're not quite like you or don't have quite the ability that you think they should have. And um, just to remember that, that we are all filled, should be all filled with the joy of the Lord. Uh, may he bless you richly today. Tomorrow we have worship at 9 o'clock in, in Sutton, uh, and you're invited to join us for that. Um, so we'll see you another day. Thanks for tuning in.